Well, not really, you see, because most of the Mandarin picture done here are dubbed anyway. Bruce Lee's profound legacy transcends the realms of martial arts, film, and culture. Even today, decades after his death, he remains a symbol of strength, innovation, and cultural unity. His untimely death in 1973 sparked endless speculation, yet his profound impact lives on. However, the perception of this icon has not been met with enthusiasm by his family. In a recent interview, Bruce Lee's daughter finally revealed the truth about him and the details will shock you. Stick with us till the end for an exclusive look behind the curtains of one of the most iconic legends in cinematic history. Shannon Lee reflects on her father's legacy. Bruce Lee is revered as a titan in both martial arts and fitness. He left an enduring legacy that transcends borders and generations. From his humble beginnings to his global stardom, Lee's journey is a testament to his unparalleled talent and dedication to his craft. Born in Hong Kong, Bruce Lee's early years were marked by a passion for martial arts. His innate talent and relentless pursuit of perfection led him to excel in various disciplines, laying the foundation for his future success. Lee's breakthrough came with his role in The Green Hornet, where his mesmerizing skills captivated audiences and catapulted him to fame. His meteoric rise to stardom was tragically cut short when he passed away at the age of 32 on July 20, 1973. Despite his untimely death, Lee's legacy endures as a symbol of innovation, resilience, and cultural empowerment. His philosophy of Jeet Kune Do continues to influence martial artists and athletes worldwide, while his iconic films remain timeless classics. In recent years, filmmakers have sought to immortalize Bruce Lee's life on the silver screen. However, Quentin Tarantino's portrayal of Lee in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood stirred controversy. Most notably, Shannon Lee, Bruce's daughter, expressed disappointment with the misrepresentation of her father's character. In the film, Lee, played by actor Mike Moe, is portrayed as arrogant and boastful during a scene where he challenges stuntman Cliff Booth, played by Brad Pitt, to a fight on the set of The Green Hornet. Some viewers and critics found this portrayal disrespectful to Bruce Lee's legacy, arguing that it misrepresented his character. Others defended Tarantino, stating that the portrayal was meant to be satirical and fit within the context of the film's fictional narrative. However, the sensitivity surrounding the depiction of real-life figures, especially iconic ones like Bruce Lee, is never to be taken lightly. Shannon Lee retorted that while she understood the film was fictional, she felt that the portrayal of her father was disheartening because it didn't accurately represent who he was. However, she also emphasized that her father's legacy was strong enough to withstand such portrayals and she encouraged people to focus on Bruce Lee's real-life accomplishments. She passionately defends Bruce's memory, emphasizing the importance of portraying him accurately and respectfully. Despite the controversies surrounding his cinematic portrayal, Bruce Lee's impact reverberates far beyond the silver screen. His philosophy of martial arts as a way of life continues to inspire millions worldwide. Lee's legacy as a trailblazer in martial arts and fitness remains unmatched, solidifying his status as an icon of the 20th century and beyond. But Rome, or in this case, Bruce Lee, was not built in a day. Lee's story is as extraordinary as it is inspiring, and it would be unjust if we were not to look at the icon from the very beginning. Humble Origins of an Extraordinary Legend Born as Lee Jun Fan on November 27, 1940, in San Francisco, California, Bruce Lee opened his eyes to a world of cultural fusion, for better or worse, between the East and the West. His father, Lee Hoi Chuen, was a renowned Cantonese opera singer, while his mother, Grace Ho, hailed from Shanghai and boasted Eurasian heritage. Lee's diverse ancestry, which included Cantonese, English, Dutch, Jewish, and Eurasian roots, contributed to his unique cultural background and worldview. Soon after his birth, his family returned to Hong Kong when he was just four months old. Their homecoming coincided with a tumultuous period in the city's history, as Hong Kong fell under Japanese occupation during the Second World War. 
These formative years exposed Lee to hardship and adversity, shaping his resilience and determination from a young age. Bruce Lee's formative years were steeped in the world of cinema thanks to his father's career as a prominent Cantonese opera star. Introduced to the silver screen at a tender age, Bruce made his debut in Golden Gate Girl, portraying a baby character. By the age of nine, Bruce had already notched several film credits, sharing the screen with his father in The Kid, a production based on the comic book persona Kid Chung. With cinematic exposure shaping his early years, Bruce's ascent in the film industry seemed almost preordained. In 1953, Bruce's acquaintance with William Chiwung led him to Ip Man, a revered Wing Chun master. Initially rejected due to his mixed ancestry, Bruce's persistence and Chiwung's advocacy secured him a place in Ip Man's school. Under Ip Man's guidance, Bruce immersed himself in the rigorous discipline of Wing Chun, despite facing resistance from some of Ip Man's students. Undeterred by skepticism and prejudice, Bruce's dedication to Wing Chun bore fruit when he emerged victorious in the Hong Kong School Boxing Tournament of 1958. Not content with just martial arts, Bruce also had a knack for cha-cha dancing, which won him the Crown Colony Cha-Cha Championship around that period. During the late 1950s, Bruce Lee became more and more confrontational. At one point, he got embroiled in a notorious rooftop skirmish following a challenge from students of a rival Choi Lee Fut martial arts school. In an altercation provoked by an unfair blow, Bruce's retaliation resulted in significant injury to his opponent. While we won the fight, it did spark legal repercussions and prompted his mother's intervention to secure his release. Sensing the escalating tension and realizing Bruce's diminishing prospects in Hong Kong, his parents decided to send him to the United States to claim his U.S. citizenship. Arriving in San Francisco in April 1959, Bruce initially lived with his sister, Agnes Lee, before relocating to Seattle to continue his education. In Seattle, Bruce juggled his studies with employment as a live-in waiter at Ruby Chow's restaurant. Briefly joined by his brother Peter in Seattle, Bruce embarked on a journey that would shape his martial arts legacy. In 1959, Bruce commenced teaching martial arts, pioneering his own approach dubbed Jun Fan Gung Fu, an amalgamation of his Wing Chun training and personal insights. Mentoring friends and enthusiasts in Seattle, Bruce's teaching drew attention. Judo practitioner Jesse Glover became one of his first students. Taki Kimura, an associate, assumed the role of Bruce's assistant instructor. And this is how the Lee Jun Fan Gung Fu Institute was established. Completing his high school education at Edison Technical School, Bruce enrolled at the University of Washington in March 1961, where he pursued studies in dramatic arts and philosophy. In early 1964, Bruce's path veered towards Oakland, where he joined forces with James Yim Lee, a distinguished martial artist. Together, they founded the second Jun Fan Martial Arts Studio. Bruce's groundbreaking demonstrations at the 1964 Long Beach International Karate Championships catapulted him into the spotlight. This also introduced him to Taekwondo master Jun Gu Ri. This newfound fame meant that his martial arts prowess would be witnessed not only by the spectators of such events, but by a much larger segment of American television watchers. From 1966 to 1967, Bruce Lee's breakout role as Cato in The Green Hornet catapulted him into the American spotlight, marking the first significant portrayal of Asian-style martial arts on popular American television. Collaborating with co-star Van Williams, Lee revolutionized on-screen combat. Following the show's cancellation in 1967, Lee credited producer William Dozier for kickstarting his showbiz career, expressing gratitude for the opportunity. The year also marked a pivotal turning point for Lee as he delved into the creation of Jeet Kune Do, a martial arts philosophy born out of his disillusionment with traditional styles. Lee recognized the limitations of his traditional Wing Chun training and sought a more adaptable approach to combat. Embracing a philosophy of practicality and flexibility, 
Lee discarded rigid conventions in favor of a dynamic system. His evolution towards Jeet Kune Do attracted the attention of Hollywood luminaries, including scriptwriter Sterling Siliphant and actor James Coburn. Together, they embarked on a collaborative venture, crafting a script for The Silent Flute. They also set for a location hunt in India. Although the project failed to materialize at the time, its legacy endured through subsequent adaptations, including the 1978 film Circle of Iron. In 1969, Lee made notable appearances in Marlowe and The Wrecking Crew, showcasing his martial arts prowess on the silver screen. Additionally, he lent his expertise as a karate advisor in The Wrecking Crew, contributing to the film's action sequences. Lee's multifaceted talents earned him a role in producing fight choreography for A Walk in the Spring Rain in 1970, further cementing his influence in the film industry. Beyond his contributions to cinema, Lee's impact extended to the realm of cultural representation. At a time when Asian actors were often relegated to stereotypical roles, Lee challenged stereotypes and helped redefine the image of Chinese people in American films. His groundbreaking work paved the way for future generations of Asian actors and filmmakers. Jackie Chan, Jet Li, Daniel Wu, Lucy Liu, and countless more wouldn't be even half as iconic as they are now if it were not for the groundwork set by Bruce Lee. Rise to Stardom in Hollywood this groundwork also paved the way for personal glory. Between 1971 and 1973, Bruce Lee's career trajectory soared as he navigated between American television and Hong Kong cinema, solidifying his status as a global martial arts icon. In 1971, Lee appeared in four episodes of Long Street, setting the stage for his own television series concept called The Warrior. The show had a successful run on television, but only after being rebranded as Kung Fu by Warner Bros. It aired from 1972 to 1975 and starred David Carradine as Kwai Chong Kane, a Shaolin monk wandering the American Old West. Despite some initial controversy regarding the casting of a non-Asian actor in the lead role, the series gained popularity and became a cultural phenomenon during its run. Following the advice of producer Fred Weintraub, Lee returned to Hong Kong to pursue a feature film career. His decision proved fortuitous as he quickly rose to prominence with Golden Harvest, starring in box office hits such as The Big Boss and Fist of Fury. Lee's meteoric rise continued with The Way of the Dragon, where he showcased his multifaceted talents as a writer, director, and choreographer, culminating in an unforgettable showdown with Chuck Norris. Lee's global impact soared even higher with the release of Enter the Dragon in 1973, a joint production between Concord, Golden Harvest, and Warner Bros. The film's monumental success solidified Lee's legacy. It also grossed over $400 million worldwide and propelled him to martial arts superstardom. Tragically, Lee's life was cut short just six days before the film's release. Though he never witnessed the release, Enter the Dragon not only cemented Lee's status as a martial arts legend, but also ignited a cultural phenomenon, sparking widespread interest in martial arts depicted in popular media and a surge in martial arts-themed television shows. Following Bruce Lee's untimely demise, those who knew him made serious efforts to honor his legacy and complete his unfinished projects. Director Robert Klaus, in collaboration with Golden Harvest, revived Lee's incomplete film, Game of Death. Lee had filmed extensive footage for the project before halting production to focus on Enter the Dragon. Despite Lee's absence, Klaus pieced together a finished film using a look-alike and archival footage released in 1978. However, only a fraction of the footage featured Lee himself, with much of it relying on a stand-in and stunt doubles. Many other film projects were also in the pipeline at the time of Lee's passing. Plans for a third film, Yellow-Faced Tiger, were in motion after the success of The Big Boss and Fist of Fury. 
Lee had also explored collaborations with competing studios for projects like The Seven Sons of the Jade Dragon. However, these ventures never materialized due to his sudden demise. Decades later, in 2015, Perfect Storm Entertainment and Lee's daughter, Shannon Lee, announced the production of The Warrior, a series based on Lee's original concept. Directed by filmmaker Justin Lin, the series premiered on Cinemax on April 5, 2019. It received positive reception from both audiences and critics for its action-packed scenes, compelling storytelling, and respectful homage to Bruce Lee's legacy. The series showcased a diverse cast and explored themes of identity, culture, and justice against the backdrop of 19th century San Francisco. While plans for a second season were announced in 2019, the series faced challenges related to production delays and uncertainties exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite all the hurdles, the production team pulled through and the second season premiered on October 2, 2020. In April 2021, The Warrior received another renewal for a third season. However, the series transitioned from Cinemax to HBO Max to expand the show's reach and audience. The third season premiered on June 29, 2023. However, despite its continued popularity and critical acclaim, the show was canceled after three seasons. Additionally, producer Jason Kathari has acquired the rights to The Silent Flute, intending to adapt it into a miniseries with screenwriter John Fusco. Pursuit of Excellence Even as a person, Bruce Lee was no less impressive than the guy that millions admired for his on-screen performance. His martial arts journey was characterized by a diverse range of influences and a relentless pursuit of physical and mental excellence. He trained extensively in various martial arts styles, including Wing Chun, boxing, and grappling, integrating techniques from each discipline into his own unique fighting system. His experience in Hong Kong's street fighting culture exposed him to a variety of martial arts styles, leading him to develop his hybrid fighting system. Lee even engaged in rooftop fights and accepted street challenges, earning a reputation as the fastest fist in the East. His physical conditioning was also legendary. Lee emphasized total fitness, encompassing strength, endurance, cardiovascular health and flexibility. He maintained a disciplined diet, focusing on healthy foods, high-protein drinks, and supplements to optimize his performance. And his workout routine was simply out of this world. He added to a disciplined regimen dedicating hours each day to honing his skills and improving his body. Lee's training sessions encompassed a diverse range of activities, including intense martial arts practice to refine his technique, strength training exercises to build functional strength, cardiovascular activities such as running and skipping rope to enhance endurance, and flexibility training to improve his range of motion and prevent injuries. He also prioritized speed and agility drills to sharpen his reflexes and movement efficiency. Despite the intensity of his workouts, Lee recognized the importance of rest and recovery, emphasizing proper nutrition, quality sleep, and active recovery techniques. His holistic approach to fitness inspired countless individuals to adopt his principles of discipline, dedication, and continuous self-improvement. Beyond martial arts, Lee also studied drama and philosophy, incorporating elements of Taoism, Buddhism, and Jiddu Krishnamurti's teachings into his philosophy. He viewed martial arts as a form of self-expression and self-discovery, advocating for continuous self-improvement and spiritual growth. And he was also quite a remarkable poet. His poetic prowess extended beyond his martial arts mastery, encompassing a profound depth of philosophical insight and introspection. Through his writings, speeches, and personal reflections, Lee conveyed profound truths about life, personal growth, and the human condition. His eloquent expressions often blended Eastern wisdom with Western pragmatism, offering timeless guidance on subjects such as self-discovery, discipline, and the pursuit of excellence. For instance, 
His famous quote, Be water, my friend, encapsulates the concept of adaptability and the fluidity of life, urging individuals to flow with change rather than resist it. Similarly, Lee's notion of using no way as way, having no limitation as limitation, reflects his belief in breaking free from societal constraints and embracing boundless possibilities. Throughout his teachings, Bruce Lee's poetic voice resonates with clarity and profundity, inspiring individuals to cultivate inner strength and strive for personal greatness. Life Behind the Curtain Another facet of Bruce Lee's identity was his family. His background was rich with cultural and familial influences. Despite their privileged status, the Lee family faced challenges during the Japanese occupation of Hong Kong, enduring nearly four years under Japanese rule. His father, Lee Hoi Chuen, was a prominent Cantonese opera and film actor, while his mother, Grace Ho, hailed from a powerful Hong Kong clan, the Ho Tongs. Lee's siblings included Phoebe, Agnes, Peter, and Robert. But one addition to this familial circle was most notable of all, his marriage to Linda Emery. Born on March 21, 1945, in Everett, Washington, Linda was the daughter of Vivian R. and Everett Emery, both devout Baptists, with a heritage tracing back to Swedish, Irish, and English ancestry. The couple first met while attending Garfield High School in Setley, where Brucey, already a martial arts enthusiast, took her as a kung fu disciple while she was studying to become a teacher. Their relationship blossomed, and they tied the knot on August 17, 1964, in a private ceremony while she was just a few credits shy of graduation. Facing societal challenges due to interracial marriage laws at the time, they exchanged vows in secret. Their marriage was filled with mutual support, with Linda standing by Bruce as he pursued his passion for martial arts and acting. The union resulted in the birth of two children, Brandon and Shannon Lee. However, tragedy struck on July 20, 1973, when Bruce Lee unexpectedly passed away due to an allergic reaction to medication. In 1988, Linda entered a marriage with Tom Bleeker, which ended in divorce two years later. She found love again when she wed stockbroker Bruce Cadwell in 1991 and settled in Rancho Mirage, California. Yet the family faced another devastating loss on March 31, 1993, when Linda's son Brandon Lee tragically lost his life in a prop, gun accident on the set of The Crow on March 31, 1993. This was the greatest loss for the Lee family following Bruce's death almost two decades prior, and it left Linda and Shannon under a great amount of duress. Despite enduring profound sorrow, Linda remained steadfast in her commitment to preserving Bruce Lee's martial arts legacy, particularly his philosophy of Jeet Kune Do. She retired in 2001, passing the torch to her daughter, Shannon. Linda Emery Lee Cadwell is also an accomplished author. Her 1975 biography, Bruce Lee, The Man Only I Knew, provided an intimate portrayal of her life with Bruce Lee and served as the foundation for the 1993 film Dragon the Bruce Lee Story, where she was portrayed by actress Lauren Holly. Additionally, Linda authored The Bruce Lee Story in 1989. Her daughter Shannon Lee studied Jeet Kune Do Under, her father's student Richard Bostillo, and later trained with Ted Wong to prepare for roles in Actian movies. She has been actively involved in promoting Bruce Lee's legacy, particularly his martial art philosophy of Jeet Kune Do. She has appeared in films and television series and has also ventured into producing, writing, and public speaking. Shannon has dedicated herself to preserving her father's memory, managing his estate, and advocating for his philosophies on martial arts and life. Additionally, she has been involved in charitable endeavors and educational initiatives through the Bruce Lee Foundation. Bruce Lee's Influence Beyond the Silver Screen 
Lee's impact beyond the cinematic career is evident in characters like Spike Spiegel from the anime series Cowboy Bebop, released in 1998. The series is set in a futuristic universe where humanity has colonized several planets and moons. Spike travels through space with his crew aboard the spaceship Bebop, hunting down criminals to collect bounties. He is a master of Jeet Kune Do, and often quotes Bruce Lee's philosophy throughout the series. Bruce Lee's emphasis on discipline, self-expression, and personal growth resonates with themes commonly explored in shonen manga and anime. His legacy has also profoundly influenced gaming genres, particularly beat-em-up and fighting games, where his iconic martial arts style and persona have been emulated and celebrated. The legend's impact also extends into the development of parkour, where his philosophy of fluidity, adaptability, and efficiency in movement serves as a guiding principle. His cultural influence is evident in television adaptations and viewership, with various shows paying homage to his legacy through references, character traits, and martial arts sequences. Speculation and ongoing interest in Bruce Lee's life and legacy continue to captivate audiences worldwide, fueling discussions, documentaries, and biographical explorations that seek to unravel the complexities of his persona and enduring influence on popular culture. Bruce Lee's demise and continuing legacy. His death on July 20th, 1973, was as shocking as it was tragic. In the prime of his youth, Lee collapsed during a dubbing session for Enter the Dragon at Golden Harvest Film Studio in Hong Kong, complaining of headaches and seizures. Rushed to Hong Kong Baptist Hospital, he was diagnosed with cerebral edema, which doctors managed to alleviate Tempora Riley. Bruce Lee had plans for dinner with the Australian actor George Lazenby, best known for portraying James Bond in the 1969 film, on Her Majesty's Secret Service. He also wanted to partake in discussions with producer Raymond Chow about the film Game of Death. However, after a script meeting with actress Betty Ting Pei, Lee complained of a headache. So naturally, Ting gave him a painkiller. He then retired for a nap but failed to wake up for dinner. Attempts to revive him failed, and he was rushed to Queen Elizabeth Hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. The autopsy revealed a considerable swelling of Lee's brain, indicating cerebral edema, with traces of the said painkiller found in his system. Initially ruled a death by misadventure, subsequent investigations and theories have opened up doors to more possibilities. In a 2018 biography, author Matthew Polly suggested that Lee's death may have been due to overexertion and heat stroke exacerbated by the removal of his underarm sweat glands in 1972. Another theory proposed in a 2022 Medical Journal article suggests that fatal cerebral edema was induced by hyponatremia, an electrolyte imbalance exacerbated by excessive water intake and medication. Regardless of the cause of his untimely demise, Bruce Lee today is revered as one of the most influential martial artists of all time and a global pop culture icon who bridged East and West. Lee is credited with launching the Kung Fu craze of the 1970s and inspiring a generation of action filmmakers worldwide. His film, Enter the Dragon, is considered one of the most influential action films ever made. He is also hailed as the father of mixed martial arts for advocating adaptability and innovation in fighting styles. Moreover, Lee challenged racial stereotypes and influenced diverse fields, including breakdancing, comic books, video games, and parkour. His likeness has appeared in countless commercials worldwide, cementing his status as a cultural icon. In recent years, Lee's life has been the subject of television dramas, biopics, and documentaries, underscoring the enduring fascination with his persona and legacy. Bruce Lee's influence continues to resonate across generations and cultures, reaffirming his status as a timeless legend. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't miss this video you see on your screen right now.
It's truly unbelievable.